In this video, I'm going to show you seven things which every PhD student must record on their diary. So let's get started after a short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and I make videos for teachers and students on my channel Digit Idea about online technology tools and I also provide guidance for PhD students. If you are interested in any of these topics, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel. So just to give you a little bit of background, about a year ago I designed a diary for PhD students and this diary was based on my own experience as a PhD student. I went from engineering industry in Pakistan to do PhD in Australia on a government scholarship and I did my PhD in flying colors. I wrote eight conference papers which was a mistake and I have explained in other videos and I wrote one book chapter and one general paper during my PhD and after my PhD I went back to uh, engineering industry and I left the research. But during my PhD I wrote 10 papers and my thesis was selected as best PhD thesis for that year from my mechanical engineering school at the University of New South Wales, Australia. There was a competition for the best thesis of UNSW. I could not win that competition but at least my thesis was selected from my school as the best thesis. But my PhD was good enough. I completed within four years and with so many papers and one of the reasons behind was that I was using diaries and I was taking notes a lot and I was writing certain things on those diaries. When I started my YouTube channel and made few videos for PhD students then I decided to design a diary for PhD students. So this is that diary and this is not a sales pitch for this diary. When I published this diary last year and I'm going to show you what are the content of this diary in a minute. But after publishing, I never looked at Amazon again. And just a couple of months ago when I looked at my diary, I noticed that uh, there are some negative reviews. And kindly enough, one of my subscribers put a photo of my diary in the review section of Amazon and he told me that content is good, but the cover page is not formatted correctly. There are few letters which are cut out during the trimming of the book. But now I have fixed this cover. Previously I did not order any author copy but now I got this. Formatting issue is fixed. The second issue was that you cannot write with ink pen on this diary. And when I looked at the paper quality, the paper quality is quite good. It is quite thick paper. If I improve the quality further to the maximum, which is for color printing. This diary is black and white. This is the second best quality. So if I improve this to the maximum quality, then it will be very expensive. So this problem I could not fix. I think that uh, you can write with ballpoint pen or with a pencil. Uh, you don't use ink pen if this is a problem. I have not tested yet, but the paper quality looks good to me. And now let's talk about those seven important things which I have put in this diary and which every PhD student should record. This diary has 232 pages and only the first 32 pages are designed for PhD students. The rest is empty pages. But at the end of every page, there is a space for connecting two or more pages. So let me show you the first thing. So the first thing you should write is top researchers in your field. I have talked about this topic and all other topics which I am going to explain you in a minute. And I have put a playlist in the description of this video which is called PhD. That playlist has uh, around 30 videos for PhD students. So you will understand many things related to this which we are discussing today. So the first thing you should write on this diary is top researchers, top journals and top conferences in your field of research. When you write the researcher there is a column for H index and H index is a number which shows you how influential and how productive a researcher is. Then you write general papers and their impact factors. Also conference papers, their cities and when is the last date for submission of the papers. So these kind of things. So this is the first thing you should write on your diary. Now the second thing which you should write is the record of all the meetings with your PhD supervisor. Because every university has a policy that supervisor must take at least one meeting with all full-time students per month 
and one meeting with all part-time students uh, in two months, for example. So this is something a supervisor has to do with uh, their students. But unfortunately, some supervisors don't spare their time. They are very busy. They even don't reply to your emails. And this is a big issue. But if you have recorded all the meeting dates, and when we go further discussing other content of this diary, you will understand that what you are going to discuss in that meeting. There are a few things about that as well in this diary. But just keeping record is important. For example, if you have to ask few questions to your supervisor, but you couldn't ask because there is no meeting. Then at the end of year, when you are presenting in front of the research committee and your progress is, for example, not good, you have some defense. You can argue that you have few questions to ask which are in this diary, but you could not get a time and this thing has affected your progress. So this is the second thing. The third thing you should record is all the potential titles of your research papers. Once you start PhD, the first thing you should do is do a keyword research in your area, which I have already explained in other videos. And after that research, a time comes when you are reading a lot of papers and then you are looking at your uh, situation and your knowledge and your equipment available to you are the expertise of your supervisor and, and then you get few ideas about your potential research papers. So whenever you get an idea, you should write in this diary. Not all of those ideas will materialize, but at least you capture those ideas. If you are reading a paper and you got some idea, you put it on this diary. And then you try to rephrase and try to make titles of your potential research papers because title is the most important thing in the paper. So there is a space to do that. Now the fourth thing is experiments and surveys. Look at your situation and think about what kind of experiment you can perform in the facility, in your laboratory, or if you are doing a survey based research, what type of survey you can do. I have a detailed video about how to make a questionnaire for surveys, which is very popular. And the other day I was looking in the comments area and I noticed that few students are putting their names in the comments. So my guess is that some professor has asked his students to watch the video and put their name as a proof, something like that, which was quite interesting. So watch that video. So whenever you get some idea about, I might do this experiment, I might conduct this survey, you write it down in your diary because all these things are moving you towards completing your PhD. All these things will help you complete your PhD in time by capturing everything in this diary and focusing on those important topics. Now the point number five is the most important point. The list of papers I want to read. Now during your PhD, the most valuable activities you can do is reading a lot and writing a lot. But this reading at the same time can be disastrous for you. If you are reading irrelevant papers and it will become worse if you are trying to understand those irrelevant papers. Because understanding scientific papers is not easy and you are wasting a lot of time try to understand those papers which are not relevant. And this is the first thing. You note it here, if you think that this paper you might want to read, and I have explained this in another video, how to read a research paper, you can watch that video, and you think that abstract is relevant, keywords are relevant, I will read this paper, you put the paper here, the title of the paper, and then when you have your next meeting with your PhD supervisor, you show these papers to your supervisor and you ask his guidance. If he is an expert in this field, he will tell you at least whether you should read or you should not read this paper. So there's a table for this. Now the sixth thing is, there is a page on which you will complete few things and this you will do after one year. Don't try to fill it on the first day of your PhD. And on this one page, you will write down your main area of research and some sub areas. This is my main area and these five are sub areas. Because once you have completed your literature review, again there is a video for that, how to do that. Now you will be in a position to write down that this is my main area of research and these are some of the sub areas. Now the seventh topic is what are the hurdles in your PhD? What are few things which you want to know or you want to learn 
is there any skill is there any course uh, you might want to do in another department of your university is there any equipment if you don't want to know how to make questions so all these type of things your hurdles which are dragging you and you are unable to move forward so again you note it down here and then when you go in the meeting with your phd advisor you discuss with him that these are some of the issues can you help me with this so write down all your problems but again this is not easy because most students they don't know why they are stuck and you should learn this as well you must have a skill to analyze that what are the key problems why i am stuck and then seek help i have a separate video five skills every research student must have you can watch that so these are the seven things which you should capture in your diary and which will hopefully help you complete your phd in time so this was not a sales pitch for this diary if you want to purchase it it will help you and if you buy this it will also support this channel but if you don't that is also fine so if you like this video if you see some value in this video please hit the like button and if you have not subscribed please subscribe to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time